Hey people and welcome to this tutorial. In this one I'm going to be showing you how to do a scatter and a scratch brush. So first of all, make a new image and make it 3000 by 2000 pixels and make it 300 resolution. Um, the reason why I've got it so high is so you can zoom into a specific section and you'll be a smaller brush or you can just have it zoomed out and you can create a massively big brush. So first off, go to brush and then click the little icon that's right there and choose your weapon of choice. Um, I usually just go with a, you know, a default round or something like that to make scatter brushes. It doesn't really matter. You're going to be making the brush small and you're going to just be doing little dots. So it, it doesn't really matter. So, after you got your brush sorted out, just zoom in to where you want it to be. And this will pretty much choose the pixel radius of your brush. As I said before, you zoom in further, the smaller the, your brush is going to be, you zoom out and create a brush that way, it's going to be a lot bigger. But uh, just remember, the smaller the brush, the faster it's going to be. If you do a big brush that would encompass the whole canvas, then it's going to be pretty slow and it's going to take a toll on your system. So what I've been doing here is just been putting variations of black and grey dots in pretty much an invisible circle. So. Um, that's pretty much what you want for a scatter brush. You want it to be random, but at the same time uniform. We'll make it more random with all the settings we use after, so it doesn't matter. You can't really go wrong with a scatter brush or screw up on them, so... Like, if you do a dot that's too big or too black, just go over it with white like I'm doing here. And, um, after you've got your little thing, uh, get the square selective tool, put it around your little brush, and then go to edit show all menu items, and then go to define brush preset. Sorry, define brush preset. Then create a name, doesn't matter, considering this is the first version, it really doesn't matter because we're just going to be going from that. And then deselect that so then you can test out your brush and um, go to the panel, make sure you've got black se selected, and this is what our brush looks like at the moment. As you can see, not very good too uniform, not thick enough, and it could be better. So first off, go to opac other dynamics and go to opacity jitter. Um, I don't really like to have flow jitter on, but you can try it out if you want. Um, scatter. This is what makes the most difference in a scatter brush, as you, as you would think. So if you have no scatter on, it's just going to be uniform. If you turn a little bit on, it'll do a lot. It'll go a long way, as you can see at the moment. Counts will sort of um, increase the thickness and darkness of it. Um, shape dynamics, if you put size to draw on, that would mean that the lighter you press would be the thinner the line, and the harder you press, the bigger. Angle jitter is very important. This will turn and rotate all of the little pixels so it's even more, you know, random. Spacing, like I just showed you there, um, if you decrease the spacing, they'll make it thicker. So this is really good if you want to do something like I'm doing here, which is a, a normal sphere. As you can see, I've got the highlights, I've got the midtones, I've got the core shadow. I'm going to add in the car shadow and the bounce lights in very soon. You don't really see many people use a scatter brush for um, this type of thing, but as you can see, I think it does a pretty good job. It's not exactly my favorite sphere, but anywho, I'll go into the basic later on of you know all that sort of stuff. But for now, please enjoy. I think I should get like some elevated music or I don't know some sort of theme to make this go quicker. Okay, so here we go. This is pretty much our brush. As you can see, pretty damn good I reckon. I'll probably be actually using this one then deleting it. So yeah. Let me rephrase that. I'll use this a lot and I won't delete it. So that's pretty much it for the scatter. And then, that only leaves us to do the scratch. For the scratch, you don't have to start from scratch, no pun intended. So, just save your scatter brush, at once again, name whatever you want, little dots repeated, who cares. And then, for the scratch brush, what you do is you pretty much turn off all scattering. You don't have any of that on. What you want to do is you want to take off all the randomness. So take off all the scattering, you can choose to have size jitter on if you want, but only if it's set to prend pressure. And um, this will make the basis for what we need. After you've done that, it will look like little dots repeated. And then you turn down the spacing. 
It's very, very simple. What you want to do is you want to turn it to two. I may have it at one at the moment, but I turn it to two because one just slows down the brush too much and it takes its toll on the computer like I was talking about earlier. So, as you can see, it's got some pretty cool effects. It's like, um, yeah, it's sort of more traditional, but at the same time, it's better. Anyway, in general, it's a pretty cool brush. Here's the second part that you can do by going to Size Jitter and selecting Pen Pressure. As I said, I think the count is four times before, maybe three. As I said, all you have to do is press lighter and your stroke will be thinner. You press darker and your stroke will be larger. So that can open the door for some cool effects like this. What I did was I started very, very light and just slowly went darker without taking the pen off. And it creates this, creates this sort of cool burst effect, which is pretty cool. Okay, so here I'm going to do another demonstration of a sphere. And yeah, I prefer this one a lot more. Looks more metallic and it puts the other one to shame. Okay, so once more I've got the highlight, the midtone, the core shadow, the bounce light, and the cast shadow, and the stuff all around it. Um, yeah, I think we really do need some elevated music or some sort of theme song. I found out that if I put any music that was made by another artist into a video like this, even if it's like 10 seconds or something like that, any ads that are displayed on this current video will go to funds that would help the music company, which, you know, I have like 30 gigs of music that I can't use here. So that, that sort of sucks. But anyway, name your brush once again. It doesn't really matter as long as you uh, know which one it is. So, as you can see, a very creative name. And then I'm going to do one more thing. This little section here in brush tip settings will allow you to really transform the brush. Choosing to alter those two little dots on the side there will compress the brush a little bit, whereas that little arrow that you see there will turn the brush. Considering these are lines and they sort of interlace as you can see on that little display below spacing, it can really, really change a brush. So after you've done all your brush editing, just save all the versions, rename them, change them where you want them to go and put them in that place and all that sort of stuff and um, in the meantime tell me what you think should I create a paid for video tutorial that would last somewhere around three hours and would show you how to create I don't know 12 brushes 14 and after that I'll probably just give you the brushes and yeah so tell me what you think below and don't forget to rate and subscribe See you next time, hopefully.